All right, let's be honest. I expected that to be a lot cooler than that was. <laughs> I was hoping I could like slide into a parallel park or something. That didn't happen. We are here at my storage unit. My bass boat is right there. And in today's video, we're gonna talk about my bass boat as a whole, where I store my tackle, what I put in my compartments, and everything I have on my boat to make it a bass catching machine. My name's Tyler, let's talk about it. So some of you guys know that over the past few years, I have worked closely with Skeeter Boats and Yamaha Outboards, two of the most powerful companies in all of the fishing industry. It is an honor and a privilege to be able to represent brands like you guys see behind me right there in my unit. And I did make a video and I make several of these a year where I pick up my new bass boat and I took it to the lake and, and, and finished you know, the break-in process of the engine. But I wanted to show you guys, as I do every year, uh, how I organize tackle in my boat, what electronics I have on my boat, and, and kind of explain to you guys why I make the decisions I do with my bass boat uh, in terms of what I buy and what I use. That way I can make videos effectively for you guys because I cannot do what I do at least on the bass boat, you know, lake fishing side of things without my bass boat. It is a, it is a filming machine and I believe that it's set up almost perfectly. It could be just a tiny bit more perfect in terms of video creation, but in my experience, it's the best that I can get right now with what I have. And so let's hop into the bass boat, but first, I need to organize it because it is a mess. So organizing time lapse in a three, two, one. Juicy, ha <laughs> So after I filmed that time lapse, I realized that I was filming backlit and my videography brain kicked myself in the butt and said, Tyler, get your boat out there in the open. So we are now out here in the open in my storage facility and we're gonna walk you guys through exactly what it looks like on the inside of my bass boat. Uh, of course, as you guys saw from the, the thumbnail, it was a black and white boat, super beautiful. It is a white interior still. It has a wrap on the outside now, which we'll show you guys at the end. And then I also want to go into why I selected Garmin Electronics for this year and all the other accessories I have on my boat to make it a bass catching machine. So let's open up the main storage compartment here in my FXR 21 bass boat and show you guys exactly why I organize my tackle in the ways that I do and why that system works for me. So as you all see here from the main compartment, we have it pretty stocked full of tackle. And so what you're looking at here, the Skeeter FXR has two main big trays right here that can actually be removed from the boat and let's say taken into your hotel room or your, your cabin you're staying in, makes for super easy tackle uh, transport. What I have though is I have, how many boxes? Six in each one? Yeah, six, you know, full size, regular old tackle boxes. I don't even know what brand these are, if they're Plano or what the heck they are, but these are normal size tackle boxes that fit inside of this one tray one two three four five six and of course I have 12 of those or actually take that back I've got 10 of those and then one full-sized swim bait box right there that houses of course all of my big glide baits that don't fit in a normal tackle box and so what I do is I organize them based on which ones I use most for that time of the year are the ones usually that are closest to where I sit so I sit right here when I do tackle and I don't wanna to have to reach too far to get the boxes that I use readily. And so during this time of the year, I'm using a lot of jigs, a lot of, of course, my terminal tackle boxes. Here's my Bass Mafia terminal tackle box. Now, the reason why I don't have a whole lot of Bass Mafia boxes, actually, I only have one, is because they're so dang heavy. I don't see the reason to be lugging around a bunch of seven pound boxes because all I need is one and that has all of my terminal tackle in it. I got my treble hooks, my wide gaps, my really everything is in here. Every hook, every sort of weight is in this terminal tackle box. And that fits nicely along, actually kind of snugly, with the rest of my boxes. So like I said, the ones closest to me are a jig box, a terminal tackle box. Then we have uh, my medium diving crankbaits. That one, you know what, should not go there. Realize I didn't actually organize these correctly. Let me do that. 
Okay, now we are fully organized. First box we have jigs. Second, terminal tackle. Third box is going to be a topwater box because this time of the year I'm throwing quite a lot of topwaters. Fourth box that we have is kind of a mixture box. It's one of my pond fishing boxes, and that is a mostly top water, but has some crankbaits, has some kind of various lures. Again, this is just kind of one of the tackle boxes that I use for lures that I'm using at the time. Then I have a square bill crankbait box. I've got my jerkbait box. Like I said, as we move our way farther and farther back are the ones that I use less often for this time of the year. Then we work our way to the medium diving crankbaits. I just don't throw medium diving crankbaits a whole lot. Then we've got lipless crankbaits. Then we've got my pond box. I'll talk about that setup with that bag there here in a second. And then lastly, I have my big swim baits right there. Like I said, these boxes change location throughout the time of the year in my boat so I can reach for the ones that I am using at that time. Now the rest of the boxes and bags that I have around the edge of my tackle storage area here in the middle don't really change throughout the year. I kind of keep these consistent, but they might end up shifting locations throughout the, uh, the this tackle storage area. So here on the left, I've got an offshore box. So this here contains a lot of the lures that I throw for offshore stuff. So we've got my 10XDs, my flutter spoons, my big hair jigs, any kind of swim baits that I want to throw in there to keep the tails nice and intact and not bent, I'll put in there. I also keep buzz baits in that box because buzz baits don't fit in any other box. And and behind that one, I have my Alabama rig box. That's where I keep all my Alabama rig jig heads, a few swim baits that are uh, pre-rigged as dummies, which means they don't have hooks on them for other states like Minnesota and Wisconsin. I keep that in that Alabama rig box, and I keep both of these off to the side. That way it doesn't get in the way of the boxes that I use a whole lot. Working our way around, I have several of these uh, strewn throughout the boat, and they are Ziploc gallon bags. And the reason why I use Ziploc gallon bags for my soft plastics is because they're cheap. I'm not going to go out there and spend $35 on a, a Bass Mafia bag or whatever other brand you want to use uh, because they are just not worth it. I have Ziploc bags. They hold all my soft plastics. And the ones that I keep down here in this area are ones that I use a whole lot throughout the time of the year. So these are my Menace Grubs. I use these a ton in the post spawn in the summer as swim jig trailers, football jig trailers, uh, chatterbait trailers, vibrating jigs. I throw a ton of Menace Grubs. Then down here we have loose soft plastics that I use a lot. These are going to be my soft plastic jerk baits. It is soft plastic jerk bait season. I don't care if you're talking about shad spawn or bluegill spawn. I've got tons of soft plastic jerk baits sitting right there. Usually by the end of the day, that area is a little bit less organized, but I try to keep it as organized as possible. Then we have a bag of flipping soft plastics. So punch bugs, rage bugs, all the stuff that I normally flip with. I keep in a bag right there. I probably should get a gallon bag for those soft plastic jerk baits, but I have not yet. Uh, I have a few secret soft plastics in there that I can't exactly show you guys. Uh, and then the two boxes I have right here are going to be my spinnerbait box. I really don't use spinnerbaits all that often, but when I do, I want to have them. So I've got, I don't know, a decent array of spinner baits in this box right here and I got like I said I keep these in their own box then I have all of my scents these are my JJ's magic scents and the reason why I keep them in a box like that is because they have a tendency to spill I do not I do not want them to spill in my tackle storage area so I keep them in their own box like I said some secret soft plastics in there I don't really have a reason why I have various reels back there, but it just always seems like I do. Then I keep all of my swim baits that are soft plastic, so the paddle tail swim baits are right there in the front of my storage. And then this bag right here, y'all have probably seen this if you follow the channel for years, is my Bassmaster member bag. I need to pick up another one of these right here, but this is where I keep all of my pond fishing essentials. So if you were to unzip this, you would see all of my pond fishing soft plastics, pond fishing hard baits that are still in the box, uh, pliers and scissors and my scale. I keep all these in my pond bag. And whenever I hop out of the boat and go to the pond, I bring this bag with me. So I usually keep that in the boat because I don't have all the exact same lures duplicated in my pond bag as I do my boat. So sometimes I'm boat fishing I need to grab something out of my pond bag. Hopefully in the next few months I can just totally take this out of my boat, leave it in my truck. That way I'm always ready to go. That is the goal. But that right there is the tackle storage area. I don't keep anything uh, magnetized up here. I see a lot of pro anglers that have like the magnet strips where they hang spinnerbaits from and you know the the TH Marine tackle titan stuff. I just don't have a use for that. I like to keep everything 
in the boxes. I don't want anything flying around. I don't want any hooks hooked into the, car, the uh, styrofoam up here. I would rather have everything secure in one area. And that is in the boxes they came in. I hardly ever take soft plastics out of their bags and put them in a box. I see pro anglers doing that as well. I just don't like to do that. I like to keep them in the bags as long as I can. When the bag is out, it goes into the trash can. So that right there is my tackle storage compartment. Now, one place that I keep a little bit of tackle that's called the day box is this little box right here. And in this one, I keep a few various things. I've got a crappie box right here for all my crappie lures, a few jig heads for swim baits. And then I've got a few things down here like extra jig skirts and extra outcast tackle uh, naked jig heads. I use those to kind of make certain jigs whenever I have a desire to uh, throw a color that outcast might not make. I do all that right there. And then I've got all the soft plastics that I used in yesterday's adventure. So we've got some stick baits, we got some buzz toads, we got some rage craws, really anything that I'm using in like the, the immediate now I have in the day box. So that's the nice and organized, I, I try to keep it organized, day box. Now, as we're looking at the front of the boat here, this is the port. This, oh wait, nope, this is the starboard, this is the port. So on the starboard side, rod locker, I say rod locker because it can contain rods. It does have a rod tube. Hopefully y'all can see that down right there is the rod tube. And in this one, I keep all of my uh, extra fishing line. So I've got tons of cigar line right here, a bunch of cigar Smackdown braid. In this box right here, I keep boating accessories I might need, but don't have a use for like right now. So underneath here, I've got some old uh, graph cards, I've got an extra prop, I've got extra sunglasses, just a lot of you know random accessories, and I keep those in boxes because I want to be organized and not have things strewn around. Then I have two Blue Storm life jackets. These here are my Blue Storm auto inflatable Atmos 48 life jackets. And then of course, to be legal, I have my one throwable life jacket right here. Of course, my Garmin transducer sits inside this locker here. And then one last thing you can see underneath there is my TH Marine locker bar, which goes from there to there to lock all of my compartments when I travel. Now, we're almost done with the, the fun part here, except for the very fun part, which is the rod locker. This here is my Skeeter FXR rod locker. It can hold a lot of rods. I mean, I've probably got I don't want to count in my head real quick, but at least 20, 25, yeah, at least at least 25 rod combos in there right now. And they all have the slicks rod socks on them to protect the guides. One thing I love about the Skeeter FXR is that they finally incorporated a bigger rod tube. This here is called the Mega Rod Tube down there. It's just one hole. You know, back in the day when you first got your bass boat, I mean, until a few years ago, every boat brand, and some still have this, have the individual rod tubes that they want individual rods to go into, and that just wastes so much space because you cannot fit a huge amount of rods because they only have like 12 holes. So this is Skeeter's way of getting rid of that problem, and I can fit however many rods I want in there. They can slide however they want into that mega rod tube hole, and uh, they all sit right there. Now, of course, the ones that I use most often are going to be the ones that I put away last, so the ones on the top are the ones that I'm using at the time. And that is all the rods and the reels. Not really anything else super exciting as we work our way back. I mean, I have a glove box here where I keep, I don't know, my keys and my sunglasses. Uh, the cooler is right there. The trash can is right there. I keep four pairs of scissors and two pairs of pliers because you never know when you're going to need a pair of scissors. Back here, of course, I have my two live wells. I've got my battery storage <coughs> area. Excuse me. And then I've got all of my extra jackets and necessary Skeeter and Yamaha paperwork, as well as my toolbox. If you want to see everything I carry in my toolbox to make sure that I'm prepared out on the water for any repairs, I will leave that video linked below and up in the corner. And then here on this side, I have all of my extra soft plastics that I might not have a use for or desire for up here. And the reason why I keep these back here is because I don't have much room in my apartment to keep all of my fishing gear. So basically the rest of my stuff, even if I'm not using it at this time of the year, so let's say, you know, drop shot worms and big worms and even sometimes hard baits back here that I'm not going to use because I don't have much storage uh, capability, at least inside that's not, you know, open to the public here. Uh, I keep it here in the back, again, with Ziploc bags based on the category. So this here is uh, drop shot worms, 
of various types. Then here we've got, what is this? More soft plastic jerk baits. And then I've got, I think, worms in that one and creature baits in that one. I try to keep this organized, not a whole lot of soft plastics around, but it can get unruly at times. And that right there is all of my storage for my tackle. So I say we talk about really fun thing, the electronics there and up there. Now a decent amount of people have asked me why I keep switching around electronics companies. I've used Lowrance, I've used Hummingbird, I've used Garmin, I have yet to use Raymarine, but I don't believe Raymarine is even making products that are competitive anymore in the bass fishing space. Um, and the reason why I went with Garmin this year was for the fact that they're so easy to put on and the, the features they have match if not overcome a lot of other brands out there. I think their side scan with the new unit that I have, transducer in the bottom, is just as good side scan as Lawrence's for sure and is almost as good in my opinion as Hummingbird. Their regular sonar is, is, is fine, it's just regular sonar. They work with Navionics mapping, so sure Navionics is not near as um, detailed or complete as Lake Master is for Hummingbird, it gets the job done for me. I can still find offshore fish just as easily. But the main reason why I went with Garmin this year is because I keep my boat at a storage unit. It's, it's of course gated and has security cameras and everything, but you still can't trust anybody out there. And so if I have to take off my graphs and put them in my truck or, or store them somewhere else so that they don't get stolen, I want the process of taking them off and putting them on to be easy. And watch this. If I go like this, my graph is on. You can't do that with other brands, I'm sorry. It literally took me, I, I'm gonna have a counter on the screen for that. It took me like what, two, three seconds to put my graph on and I'm just telling you guys, y'all out there might not think it's a huge deal to have to, to screw in and unscrew your graphs to put them on your boat, but it really becomes a hassle, especially when you do it so often and when you have to do it when your hands are cold, when you're tired, when you get to the lake and you have to do that for 15 minutes to prepare your boat before you can go out there. Instead of having to do that now, I just get to the lake or I, you know, I do it here at the storage unit before I leave for the lake. I clip all my graphs on in a matter of like a minute and I'm ready to go to the lake. So for me, ease of use far outweighed any sonar or mapping advantage that Hummingbird have that ha Hummingbird has. For me, Garmin was the unit I wanted to go with this year. In my opinion, if you could combine together the three electronics brands, I think you would have an amazing piece of technology. You could take the ability of Garmin's to just clip onto your boat, the mapping and the uh, the sonar of Hummingbird, and then how easy Lawrence makes it to manage and put down waypoints, I think you could have an incredible piece of equipment. For now though, Garmin fits the job for me. I have loved how easy they are to put on, and like I said, they fit the bill in every other way that fits my desires. And the mounts that my graphs sit on are Boat Logics mounts. They are custom mounts for the front of my bass boat here. Tons of pro anglers across the country use Boat Logics. I have a ton of confidence in these things that they're gonna hold my graphs steady. I'm gonna have another regular Garmin here that clips in to this front mount, but then I do have one Garmin that's different. These are uh, these are Echo Map Ultras. This here is a GPS map. It is a slightly older unit. The only reason why I got a GPS map that yes, does have two things to screw in, so it takes me a little bit longer to put this graph on than those two do. Uh, the only reason why I got this one is because Garmin has still not put the software update in the, the, uh, the Echo Map graphs to allow you to use your phone to record your screen. If y'all have ever seen a YouTuber out there, and I, I think I have at least a few videos on my channel of some screen recordings from Garmin, that only comes standard on the older units. They have not put some sort of dumb software update in their newer units, and so hopefully they can hear this video and hear me complaining that, hey, it's not that hard, at least in my mind, it wouldn't be that hard to put a software update in this thing to allow you to record your screen. But because I make videos for you guys and I wanna show you a little bit of what LiveScope looks like here and there, I have one of the older units that can actually record your screen. So that's why I have two different units up front. Ideally, I would have three to four units on my boat that are just the clip-in, but of course, we don't have that luxury. That's why I said at the beginning of the video, this boat is almost a perfect fish catching machine. I just wish this graph didn't have to screw in. I wish those graphs right there could just record the screen. The trolling motor that I'm using right now is the Minn Kota Ultrex. I mean, as of right now, it's the best in the industry. I've had buddies that use the, the Lowrance Ghost and the Garmin Force, and they just have problems with theirs. And so the, the Ultrex is still the best trolling motor out there. Uh, I'm going to be testing out another trolling motor here in the next 
few months probably you might see it here on the channel and we're gonna see if that one can overcome the old treks in terms of quality and such but right now that's the one that I'm running I've got the TH marine prop nut eliminator prop nut on here I don't know if it eliminates any sound or not but it just makes it super easy to change the prop like I said I carry a spare prop in the boat because I've had too many situations where I go out to the lake I hit some rocks in my prop and I and I shatter the thing and so I'm basically shot the rest of the day I can't make any videos because I can't troll around anywhere so the days are over where I don't have an extra prop in my boat now I do not have an extra Yamaha prop because if I feel like if I hit something hard enough that I break a prop on my engine i've probably got bigger things to worry about than making a video but trolling motor is one thing that you can easily break the prop and easily replace with the uh, the prop nut here on the end and as i look over the rest of the boat i don't really think is anything else really that special i guess back there i've got my 10 foot power pole blades and I'll, I'll take myself back there with you guys the reason why i went with 10 foots last year and this year is because i just don't see a disadvantage in having 10 footers they can reach down, at least in my boat with my with my transom and jack plate setup. Uh, they can reach down nine and a half to almost ten feet. I mean, they say ten foot blades, but of course they can't reach and actually anchor you in the bottom. But they can definitely anchor fully in nine feet of water. You can't do that with the eight foot blades. They can anchor in in, in seven feet of water, and so you're you're basically cutting off two potential feet by getting a shorter power pole. So that's why I have the ten foot blades. Um, I'm still running a stock prop on my Yamaha. I believe it's a 25 pitch. Yeah, it's the 25T2, to be honest. Don't know what that means, but I just know that's the one they recommend and the one that came on my engine, so that is the one that I am using. I just did the 20-hour uh, the oil change on this thing, so she is ready to go and prime for the rest of the year. But that is my beautiful, beautiful bass boat, inside and out. As y'all can see from this gorgeous shot right here look at her look at how cool she is that's awesome now one of the big reasons why i make these videos usually is because my boat is for sale every single year my deal with skeeter and yamaha is that they give me a boat to use but i am responsible for selling the boat and so i usually say hey if you guys want to buy my boat it is a baby boat it is wrapped you know all year long I do not put this boat uh, for uh, at near as much wear and tear and strain as your average professional angler does. So I think my boat is a really good option for you guys out there that have the budget to buy a one year old bass catching machine. But I've been so blessed, my boat is actually pre-sold. I had someone, a buddy of mine from Minnesota, you'll probably see me uh, take him out for a trip this summer in what's going to be his boat. The cool thing though, is that you guys, if you would like to pre-order my 2022 Skeeter FXR21, uh, that is an, an option for you guys, I can let you guys pick out the color uh the the, the style the the seats uh, everything is customizable for you you just got to wait another year to get it that way i can use it for the year and then give it to you guys as a one-year-old used boat so if that interests any of you guys if you can wait till the end of 2022 to get a a brand new bass boat uh, that would help me out a ton to get my boat sold and keep my contract going with these two awesome companies like i said i can vouch for how good i take care of this boat and how perfectly i set it up to catch bass well that is going to do it on today's episode i don't believe i have anything else that i can talk about when it comes to my boat i think i've covered the majority of it uh you probably saw in that video in there i have my there's a pole where is it right there my my filming setup if you guys are curious about how i film my videos i will also have that video linked in the video description and we'll see you guys next time for another instructional i promise here on trf